not the best of days, admittedly, for doing this. And if you're watching this channel for the first time, you may well think to yourself, what on earth have I tuned into? And even those that have watched this channel for the best part of two years are probably thinking the same. Well, this is a method of collecting invertebrates, especially caterpillars and beetles, and it's called beating. Beating, it's fairly simple. You use a stout stick and you need a tray in which to knock anything that's on, in this case, blackthorn, onto. So this is a beating tray. You can use a white sheet and in the good old days they used to use an upturned umbrella. And the idea is you beat the foliage, one or two stout wax, it dislodges anything on which is on there and then you can look on this sheet and see what there is. And we've got quite a few bits. So while the intro's playing, I'll have a look and see what we've got. Automatic glasses, what do you get to that? Well, it's primarily caterpillars that I'm after, and in particular one species, slow pug, is the caterpillar I'm after. And in order to find slow pug caterpillar, you need to beat blackthorn while it's in blossom. And I say because of the rain that we had yesterday afternoon, this isn't the best of conditions. Things are slightly damp, but there are a number of caterpillars here, which I need to collect and ultimately rear on. The reason I've got to rear them on is so I know exactly what they are. Now, not all caterpillars are easily determinable at a young stage. Quite often, a young caterpillar can start off green and then end up being black and white or brown. So you never know. So it pays if you're doing this kind of stuff. You need to know what you're collecting from. That helps narrow down your search, potentially. And then you need to be prepared to rear that caterpillar on. But you've never seen me in petals before have you now before you ever do employ this tactic if you do you need to make sure that there are no bird nests in the hedge and i've checked this and there is no bird nest at all there's a black cap at the far end but there's no black cap nest here it's just a male in territory in this general area and that's something you must always do particularly if you ever beat ivy, ivy on tree trunks, check first. Often there can be a wren's nest tucked away in ivy, but ivy on tree, you know, grown up tree trunks is a great thing to beat. You get some wonderful stuff to turn up, but we'll have a go with this. Right, now the fun bit, seeing what we've knocked out. One of the best things you can do and sample is hawthorn blossom as well. Hawthorn blossom inevitably provides great results and not everything will be obvious you'll get lots of small beetles 
beetles of varying sizes and descriptions. And there's one or two examples of Druchidae on here. Time you had a closer look. Well, you always need a pot handy. Things inevitably fly quickly. And here's a beetle here. That's one of the members of the Bruchidae. There's that one there, which is probably Brutus Rufimanus, and then there's some smaller ones here as well. They look a bit more interesting. And say at first, not everything makes a move for it. And you can gradually move some of the material out of the way. And it's like a lot of things, you're looking for a bit of movement. There are too many species to be able to record. A lot of Melagethes beetles, which are inevitably attracted to pollen. So whenever you beat flowering shrubs or anything, you will always get copious amounts of Melagethes beetles or pollen beetles. Our quarry isn't here, but this is. So this is the second one of these. And I have a feeling, I'll just clear that. I think this is the lava of green brindled crescent, but I need to photograph it to be sure. Green brindled crescent is an autumn flying species, one that has featured on this site before. The larva gets far bigger than this. This is only young, and we're at about 13, 14 mil here. There's another two brucious, probably Rufimanus, that's the, the commonest, but that, they appear to be the interesting things on here. So I'll pop this lava up and grow it on. There are caterpillars on here. The ones I've took off, I've took a couple of geometry day caterpillars. One is probably mottled umber. But there's no sign of the intended species of slow pug. So, I wanted to try another bit. I'll move round to the western end of Eakley Meadows now. And funny enough, a lot of the blossom on this blackthorn has come off. I was hoping that a standard blackthorn over there would still be full of blossom, but the rain that we've had, especially the heavy showers yesterday, has took all that blossom off. So it's not on everything, but we'll give it a try and see what we get. And the answer on this bit is not a lot. Now, there is the potential species. There's a small caterpillar here. It's a bit too small to show you, but it's cream coloured with a pinkish reddish stripe down it. It measures well less just shy of 
a centimetre. It's about eight, nine mil. And that could possibly be caterpillar of slow pug. So, because it's a small, I won't make the mistake of not potting it and then trying to photograph it and then losing it. So we'll pot it up. And then we'll take it home and photograph it under more controlled conditions. Now the reason I tap this after I've beaten the material onto it is that it brings everything to the centre. And then a useful tactic is to stand and look and see what starts to, to vacate this. We do have a lace bug. I can't remember what the first part of the name is, but the second part of the scientific name is Dumatorum. At the moment, not a lot is coming out. I have done a bit of research in between takes on this and the largest of the Bruchidae that I was beating earlier was indeed Rufimanus. The smaller one, which looked more interesting, indeed is. But I need to check exactly which species it is but it looks like a Bruchidus I can't remember the second part it might be Varians but it seems to be an interesting species for Nottinghamshire and unfortunately there isn't one in this lot but I have got some potted up but they're lively Quite often, a lot of things, when they appear on the beating tray, they're very quick to take flight. Other things sit still. And when you're dealing with small beetles or invertebrates in general, it's sometimes difficult to see and you think there's nothing here at first hand there's another brood just roof of Magnus. I don't know whether you'll see it, but that's another Brutus species, so we'll pop that up as well. Not the best of things to use when you when it's quite windy. But this is a Brutus species that I didn't get earlier.
Nope. We'll try another bit. Oh, saying that. I need to take this, but I'll set the camera up and show you this. This might be the lava of Slow Pug. I told you. You think there's nothing there, and then all of a sudden something moves. But that's what I'm on about. Well, I can tell you that this is indeed the lava of Slow Pug. And this probably hasn't got much more growth in it before it pupates and we're looking at about 15 millimeters here the one that I've already potted up is smaller I was told a couple of years ago that this was an easy species to find in the larval stage the adult like many pugs can be hard to determine whereas there is no mistake in this I do like it when a plan works out. So there we are, that's the lava of Slow Pug. Not too difficult to find. And to be honest, if you were to visually search for this, you wouldn't find it. You'd waste too much time to warrant the find even if you did manage to find it and that's where the beauty of using a beating tray comes in I wouldn't have found this in fact I have found two which I will be taking home to rear but a distinctive caterpillar say this one's 15 mil max a pale green with that purple dorsal stripe and being a member of the Geometridae family, this is what you would call a looper caterpillar. It has that action of walking on a flat surface. You don't see it so much here, but the back end is brought up to the head end. The head end moves away from the back end and the body in turn forms a loop and the caterpillar moves that way. Brilliant stuff. Well, the good old trusty beating tray. What an excellent tool for the entomologist to use. It's probably used far more by coleopterists now than by lepidopterists. Nobody that's interested in butterflies and moths seems to want to look for caterpillars and rear caterpillars through anymore. Most people have seen the adult butterflies or the adult moths of any number of particular species, but how many of them have seen a large proportion of those species larvae? Not many, I can tell you. Yet at one time of day, the use of these by lepidopterists was commonplace. Certainly in the Edwardian and Victorian times there would have been. But Sadly, no more. Yet caterpillars and looking for caterpillars and lava is very, very interesting. And as a result, much in a similar way to attracting moss by the use of an MV light, quite often the bycatch, anything else other than butterflies or moths, can be of even more interest sometimes. Some very rare things have turned up to MV lights and while looking for lava, other rare things fall onto the sheet at the same time. And as somebody who has an interest in virtually all forms of invertebrates, it's a win-win situation. Surprising what turns up with the use of one of these. 
well worth investing in one. They might be quite expensive, but they're a great tool and they'll save you hours and hours of visual searching. I'd highly recommend one. Great fun. The stick it could be any old stick. You could carve one out, but I tend to use the first bit of suitable stick that I find. That way, I'm less inclined to be arrested for weird habits.